Tanya Tompkins, Artistic Director of Valley of the Moon Music Festival, and I am so thrilled to present to you today two amazing musicians in the vocal world. Christine Brandis, who is our 2021 Blattner Lecturer, um, in a discussion with fantastic baritone Deshaun Burton, who's making his Valley of the Moon Music Festival debut with us in an incredible program of um, Burley and Dvorak, which I'm really looking forward to. I'm also really looking forward to hearing these two amazing people talk to each other. So without further ado, please take it away. Great. Hello, everyone. Thank you. Hello. Thank you all for being here. So, Deshaun, so, so, so fun to have a chance to chat with you. So, I have so many questions and I'm so yeah. interested in knowing um, about the program, how you put it together. Mm -hmm. um, maybe some of the people logging into this aren't aware of the truly remarkable relationship between Dvorak and Burley. Mm -hmm. and, um, I'm wondering if you'd like to tell us a bit about that process of putting the program together and, and maybe informing people a bit about that really remarkable relationship. I think the, the thing that is so remarkable about their friendship, um, uh, Dvorak came to America to, to study and to, to learn about uh, lots of different kinds of music as, as, he, as was his want. He um, uh, you know, was really interested in, in music of, of people and in, in music of people of everyday lives. <clears throat> and um, and sort of just kind of taking taking music uh, that that people would sing outside or or in work or in their lives and elevating it to uh, to the artistic um, concert space. Um, and this is exactly the same uh, that that Dvorak uh, was interested in. Uh, he he was uh, excuse me that uh, Burley was interested in. He was an amazing um, uh, singer and organist and and composer as well, but um, uh, really really was interested in finding the connection between the 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 black spirituals that that he grew up with and and the concert halls um, that that people really needed to hear this music in. So uh, it was a yeah it was a really um, a, a great moment uh, in music history when when they both met uh, found that they really had so much in common and and really became uh, good friends and so Dvorak uh, learned a lot uh, quite literally from from his study uh, and listening to black spirituals in this way um, and uh, incorporated spirituals and and lots of different folk songs of America into um, his his late works uh, most famously the New World Symphony and, and things like this so um, it, it's one of it, I think it's one of uh, our sort of treasured uh, corners of, of music history and especially vocal music history uh, that, that these two people met. Uh, so to do their their music on the same program is, is always a natural extension of, of that moment. You know, I'm very, uh, I was interested to discover that it is really hard to find a recording of Burley's music that is not based in spirituals or in plantation songs. Mm. Like his straight, I am doing mm -hmm. Western art music mm. compositions. Very few people have sung them. And um, I'm wondering if, if you have an opinion on sort of why that is. The, the music that he wrote uh, all across the board uh, is, is really um, so imbued with, with just who he was as a singer, especially. Yeah. Uh, but, but definitely um, uh, just, just the mind that he had to synthesize so many types of music and so many types of, uh, you know, of, of, ex of his own experiences. Um, so I, I, I think especially the vocal music that, that he wrote all across the board um, in, within and out, outside of uh, the, the, the Black American uh, um, tradition um, uh, was, it, it's, it's, it's really, yeah, it, it speaks. I think it's, a, it's universal music. Um, mm -hmm. And I think uh, just in the same way, you know, that, that we, are, are trying to reconvene kind of as, as a culture in terms of, of music and in terms of musical performances uh, to really give music uh, by composers 
uh, who aren't the same, you know, kind of recorded people over and over again. Uh, we want to give them their due, and I, I think uh, I, I know very much, um, you know, that 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 this is kind of the the work uh, that that needs to be done to catch up uh, sure. with with so many other um, you know composers and and styles of music uh, yeah. that that we've already done. So this is music that um, is is really uh, is is quite excellent and needs to be um, uh, recorded and performed at every turn. Yeah. Yeah, it was very interesting to me uh, to hear Burley sing. There's a, a the only one I heard was a, a recording from 1919, and um, wow, such such an interesting singer. I'm I'm curious to know whether you I'm sure you've listened to these recordings and of course, of course, yeah. what your thoughts are about about his performance. And, you know, I was thinking about, you know, famous recordings of um, Marian Anderson, for example, singing, mm -hmm. well, f very famously singing Deep River mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. rolling her R's, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? And yep. that is super, super interesting to me. And I'm, I'm that, that question, this, this observation and my question to you about that is gonna lead down another path about language, but mm -hmm. tell me about those rolled R's. I think it's the it's the elevation and the culture um, that that uh, you know you sort of have have this music of of your tradition, but again it belongs in the concert hall just along with all of this other music as well. So if if you are a trained singer uh, in in one style, um, that is going to be the 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 way that you sing. And so I I think we all kind of have moments like this throughout music history. I think now we're in a in a moment of you know trying to find sort of more of a vernacular in, in you know, kind of music that appears in, in these um, sort of storied places. Uh, but but I, I very much know back then, you know, that, that, the, that this was kind of the, the apex of, of, you know, sort of the, um, of, of the musical performance. And, and to do so with, with such clarity and with such diction um, uh, only, you know, is an extension of, of their training. Um, so, so you'll hear a lot of, of, you know, really, you know, kind of open and broad, you know, sort of chested sounds of, yeah. of bel canto singing, and that's because that's what they studied. That's that's what they knew, and and that's what um, that's what the the highest uh, sort of um, form of singing was, um, especially at the times of of early recordings. Uh, so you you, you kind sure. of you know, have have the technology kind of catching up to the sound. I mean, it, there's there's a lot that that kind of goes into that history, but um, but that's that's what makes it remarkable, and that's one of my you know sort of frustrations with um, I think you know what what has happened before the past year. Uh, so much music has gone kind of unrecorded or un sort of observed uh, in so many ways. I'm really grateful for for so much being digitized and and made accessible because how how lucky are we that that we have these early recordings and that we have these um these pristine sort of images of of what was happening at that time um so you know copyright issues and all of that aside it yeah. always seems like a missed opportunity to to not preserve uh music for for future generations yeah absolutely yeah just amazing and i was also totally astonished to learn that he, uh, Burley had been a coach, a vocal coach yeah, to yeah. Caruso and Marian mm -hmm. Anderson and mm -hmm. Paul Robeson. I mean, he, his, yes. his mind was was brilliant. I mean, he, he was he was really one of the um, one of the sort of nexuses of, of music, you know, in, in America and, and people learned from him, you know, in, in every, in every possible way. And I, he was, he was a real, he was a legend. I mean, he, he truly yeah. was a legend um, in, in terms of the, the church music world and in terms of the, um, uh, the sort of compositional world. And again, in terms of, you know, really elevating music uh, to, to its highest uh, performance standards. Yeah. Amazing. Um, I was also very interested to read about um, the, clash that occurred at you know at the height of of his career um just at the same time that the harlem renaissance was really taking off and getting legs um langston hughes and um hurston all of these people who were elemental to the 
Harlem Renaissance were really upset with Burley. And they're like, okay, you're just, you know, you're just rolling over and basically giving our treasure to these white maniacs who have no idea what to do with it. And, and you're, you're putting it into a context where it doesn't belong. You're sort of giving it away to people who shouldn't be having it in that, in that form or in that mode. Um, and, you know, loads of people rallied on both sides of this hotly contested uh, question at the time. And um, I'm just wondering, had you been Burley in the time, what might your answer have been to Langston Hughes? I don't, I don't know that, you know, there is any answer that, that could make sense to us today uh, mm. because we, we're, we're, we're fighting different fights today. We're fighting uh, just the fight of visibility in the first place. We're we're fighting, yeah. you know, the, the fights of being, um, uh, you know, allowed into these spaces, but still not being made to feel welcome. And uh, and so, what whatever my answer would have been, I I don't think it would make sense in you know today's context. Mm -hmm. I I think that you know anytime you have many brilliant minds in one room, in one society, in one you know culture. There's always going to be, you know, um, a a kind of um, a, a, a sort of a, a meeting of the minds that pushes the entire genre forward. If, yeah. if everyone was just, you know, kind of getting along and saying, okay, well, this is that and this is that. Yeah. You know, we, Not... we wouldn't be paying attention to to these these words. They they wouldn't be uh, as richly infused with with the with the struggle of of really having to fight through uh, so much of the noise of, of the day. And, and it's the same uh, in that sense, it's the same today. We, we, we have so many different cultural weapons in order to fight racism in every possible form. Uh, but of course, there are going to be lots of people who, who truly believe that you know, this is the only way that we do it, or there mm -hmm. are going to be you know, people who believe, no, this is the only way that we do it. But right, right. without without us all fighting for for what is truly the the goal, um, we're you know we we're we're just sort of deluding ourselves otherwise. Right, looking for that open equal space, equal access, equal time. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And are you hopeful? Oh yeah, I mean you know okay. the, the the amount of work that is that is being done um, in in order to to push. Uh, the 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 society of, of music forward, um, uh, the amount uh, that that our young heroes, uh, students, young musicians, emerging professionals uh, are doing to to just eradicate everything that we know, you know, and just push us out and say no no we really need to look forward we really need to come to a place uh, that that is that is true that that is the the kernel of, of why we're all. Um, doing this, um, uh, you know, as as human beings, um, the, I, I'm I'm only I'm I'm only hopeful when I when I get to um, when I yeah when I sort of take in the work of the next generation. That that is that is our only hope. Amazing, totally amazing and wonderful. Thank you so much, Christine. Yeah. Oh, you are just so fabulously brilliant. It yeah makes me cry. <laughs> so. Um, let me just uh, formally right now, before I turn off the record button, um, thank you guys, both of you so much for this fascinating discussion and sharing your deep thoughts with, with everyone. And we really appreciate having you both here and thank you. cannot wait to hear this concert. The little bit I already heard of it has gotten me so excited to hear it and it sounded so beautiful. So I can't wait. Thank you so much. Thanks. Yay. I've been in the storm so long.